Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00 and today we are giving another aspect of the Halo universe the most detailed treatment. We are returning to personal arm systems. We have analysed the Mark 4, 5, 6 and 7 from the Gen 1 Mjolnir platforms and even had a look at the Elite Combat Harness. Well, it's been a long time in coming and I've had plentiful requests for it in practically every video I've uploaded since the last most detailed. So I'm pleased to finally give you the most detailed breakdown of the Mjolnir Gen 2 platform. Let's do this. The Mjolnir Powered Assault Armor Gen 2 is the second system-wide generation of the Mjolnir Powered Assault Armor. Gen 2 introduces many improvements to the suit's core architecture, specifically tailored for use by the Spartan 4 super soldiers. The production of the second generation Mjolnir armor used a spiral development model allowing the United Nations Space Command and its various contracted corporate partners to create and design armor systems much faster and more efficiently than before. The armor was designed to compensate for the Spartan 4's less extensive physical augmentations in comparison to the previous two generations. As a result, the armor multiplies the strength of its wearer significantly more than the first generation suits, granting the Spartan 4s roughly equal strength as their predecessors while wearing the suit. The Gen 2 suit is also lighter and stronger in construction than the first generation Mjolnir line, weighing approximately a couple of hundred kilograms. Gen 2 Mjolnir integrates the vast majority of the armor's vital hardware systems within the inner tech suit itself, allowing for more streamlined production and easier implementation of specialized subsystems and armatures. As such, when it comes time to analyze each component of the suit, we won't be doing our normal modus operandi of analysis by looking at the outmost layer first and then working inwards. Instead, we'll be working from the innermost layer outward. The Gen 2 Mjolnir armor was initially developed and created by the Office of Naval Intelligence Materials Group as a response to the emerging Spartan 4 program initiated on January 7th, 2553. Several earlier models of the Gen 2 Mjolnir armor were field tested by Spahn Tedra Grant. Some of the first contemporary models of the Gen 2 Mjolnir armor were first tested in combat in January 2553 when new colonial alliance forces launched a raid on UNSC Infinity and the five Spahn force in training aboard the warship were forced to don their armor to help combat the insurgents. As of 2558, Gen 2 armor is standard issue for nearly all active Spartans having replaced the semi-powered infiltration armor of the Spartan 3s. The remaining active Spartan 2s, such as those on Blue Team, have since donned Gen 2 armor. Initially, Spartan 2 Naomi 010 used Mjolnir Mark 7 powered assault armor, the last iteration of the first generation of Mjolnir armor. However, the Mark 7 never saw full implementation with the rest of the Spartan 2s due to its complexity and expense. Eventually, the UNSC determined that continuing to fund the first generation of Mjolnir armor that was only focused on the Spartan 2s was not worth the cost, particularly given the escalating cost and capabilities of the newer Spartan 3s and Spartan 4s in Gen 2 armor. As a result, the Mark 7 has largely been phased out of production in favor of the Gen 2 Mjolnir, though many technologies developed for the Mark 7 have since been incorporated into the Gen 2 armor. While the previous iteration of Mjolnir powered assault armor was often, though not always, created and manufactured by organizations, departments and branches of the United Nations Space Command, the United Earth Government has contracted numerous corporations to design Gen 2 armor variants. For example, the RKD Group was responsible for designing the Mermillion class armor variant, though the group contracted Korolev Heavy Industries to produce the armor and license the suit's BIOS from applied heuristics. Even major military industrial concerns such as Biwiglik Keats Rustung System no longer control all aspects of their armors, tactical packages and software, both within the military and among private contractors. Production of some Gen 1 variants was shifted between corporate entities while other contracts were transferred from the military to private industries. In addition to these larger corporations, a major policy shift within the UEG has led to smaller corporations and businesses being given the opportunity to compete in the paramilitary, military and security markets. Many smaller industrial design firms and military subcontractors have used the common Gen 2 Mjolnir software and exoskeleton as a springboard for their own innovations. 
Nonetheless, UNSC organizations such as Materials Group and the Watershed Division still continue to manufacture several variants of the Gen 2 Mjolnir armor. In addition to human corporations, select other species have had a role in the development of some major iterations of the Gen 2 Mjolnir armor and its components, notably the Heliosgrill class Mjolnir was designed by a Sangheili artisan armorer designer who had managed to reverse engineer the Mjolnir armor in an effort to test her skills against humanity's best armor manufacturers. This Mjolnir variant is designed by Sanghelios's Kular Manufactorium and fielded among the Spartan Force. Some visor designs have been created using high-tier nanolaminates and scanning elements provided by the Sangheili, while others are even compatible with the Sangheili combat harness. As ties between the Swords of Sanghelios and the UEG strengthen, many Sanghili artisans have gained interest in working with Gen 2 armor. The King visor utilized by some Spartans was initially created by a bored Huragok and subsequent attempts to copy the design have been met with varying levels of failure. Even Forerunner technology has been incorporated into the armor. Additionally, visor kits with an unknown manufacturer have been found by Oni operatives in the arms markets of the insurgent-controlled Venezia. The Gen 2 armor incorporates new ad hoc modification systems which allow the armor to use armor abilities, tactical packages, and support upgrades. Like its Gen 1 predecessors, it is backward compatible through hardware and firmware upgrades with previous armor systems, including the Mark IV, V, Six and the Mjolnir variant of the Orbital Drop Shop Trooper's armor. The Broker armor mechanism is a Da Vinci multi-axis assembly system used to mount Mjolnir onto a Spartan's tech suit. Many Spartan Fours choose to customize their armor in a variety of ways and are typically given the option to customize armor variant, paint color, visor model, and other cosmetic features. Even tech suits can be modified based on the Spartan's mission or need. An assortment of armor configurations are available for all new Spartan 4 recruits as per UNSC Regulation 3A-950, and Spartans are capable of customizing their individual armor set with modular components from a wide range of special purpose variants, based on their personal preference, specialization, and mission requirements. Selecting variants for purely cosmetic reasons is discouraged. The UNSC strictly forbids Spartans from attempting to repair or modify their armor on their own, all armor maintenance is only to be performed by qualified Class 61 technicians in dedicated facilities. Unlike the generally green coloration of the Spartan 2's Mjolnir armor, the Spartan 4 armor comes in a profusion of distinct color patterns, with the members of specific teams sometimes, though not always, sporting a consistent coloration. However, any customization of the armor must be in accordance with the UNSC Equipment Code 20.00.62. The paint used on each Gen 2 Mjolnir armor is known to quickly deteriorate in combat as little effort was made to invest in stronger quality paint. While the suit's primary production model bears less significance than in the previous Mjolnir generations due to the Gen 2's more distributed design philosophy, the Material Group's Warrior variant is officially considered the mainline model for the Gen 2 armor. Another prevalent model is the Recruit variant which is issued to all Spartan 4s upon induction and coloured grey and gold by default. Gen 2 Mjolnir is also able to be hybridised with Gen 1 Mjolnir suits. When Douglas 042's Mark IV armour was damaged and UNSC Spirit of Fire was unable to produce more core components during the Second Arc conflict, the Spirit managed to upgrade the suit into a hybrid version of the Mark IV slash Gen 2, along with the rest of Red Team's armour thanks to an amalgamation of modifications made by Isabel and Serena and recovery of Gen 2 parts from the UNSC outpost. The Gen 2 also features a plethora of attachments that enhance certain aspects of the base Gen 2's capabilities. These attachments include the airstrike which calls in heavy munitions around the user, the M2705 regeneration field applies a force to remove hostiles from the presence of the user and then temporarily appropriates the armor system functions targeting biological and combat vitality oriented armor functions in order to heal the user and repair the armor. The M805X thruster pack is a booster pack used to propel the wearer forward or to either side. The overshield is a covenant developed technology that strengthens the user's energy shielding system. Proximity mines deploys three mines that lock onto hostiles. 
Repel flash freezes a small area causing considerable harm to nearby personnel and equipment. Seeker drones deploy an explosive homing drone. Series 12 jetpack mitigates gravity allowing mobility over challenging terrain. Shock chain creates an energy shield that damages enemies and restores the user's energy shielding. The stun blast which creates a short range electromagnetic pulse which interferes with all electronic equipment within the radius of the pulse. Teleport which allows a near instantaneous transport over short distances. A type 27 hologram which creates a holographic projection of the user that can draw enemy fire. The type 3 active camouflage which affords the wearer a brief period of near invisibility in addition to scrambling nearby motion detectors. The Z2500 Auto Sentry is a fauna created support drone used to suppress enemy combatants. The Z4190 Bubble Shield is a stationary shield reverse engineered from Forerunner technology. The Z5080 Promethean Vision is a sonar like Forerunner visual enhancement system that displays movement through solid objects. The Z90 Hard Light Shield is a shield made from Hard Light reverse engineered from Forerunner technology. All of these attachments give additional functionality to the Gen 2 platform. The attachments themselves contain all the necessary components to function independent from the Gen 2 platform. Attaching them to Gen 2 simply allows this additional ability or information to be channeled into the Gen 2's BIOS and use Mjolnir's considerable internal computational systems and features to perform their tasks effectively. All of these attachments would be otherwise useless without all of the other components which go into making a suit of Mjolnir Gen 2. So as previously stated, due to the changes in the Gen 2 platform being much more modular with the same core component package, we will instead opt to work from the inside out. The inner skin suit is made of a moisture absorbing synthetic material linked to an environmental control computer. It controls the suit's temperature and actively changes how the suit fits the user. The suit appears to double as the Spartan Falls equivalent of a battle dress uniform. It contains various human interface systems including permanent intravenous ports for medical and nanomachine administration, including biofoam and catheters for waste recycling and disposal, a slightly more invasive measure than previous iterations but deemed necessary to get the most out of the upgrades as possible. The inner skin suit is much more sophisticated than in the previous generation as it takes on several of the functions of the components of the Gen 1 platform. The suit appears to be lightly armoured with interconnected composite panels to maintain flexibility and still provide protection. The material looks to be a liquid armour impregnated material, likely something similar to a few layers of Kevlar with a dilatant and ceramic colloidal particulate armour suspension. Such a system allows the wearer flexibility for a normal range of movement, yet provide rigidity to resist piercing by bullets, stabbing knife blows and similar attacks. The principle behind it being similar to that of male armour though the body armour using a dilatant would be much lighter. The dilatant fluid would disperse the force of a sudden blow over a wider area of the user's body, reducing blunt force trauma. It also features over a dozen hardpoints. These small triangular metallic components connect to an underlying fully articulated base support structure and serve as the connection point between the inner skin suit and Mjolnir's tech suit, while also being a hermetically sealed feed-through for the sensors, electronic suites and other peripheral systems to bridge the gap between the user and the suit without compromising the suit's pressure seals. Sandwiched between the external armour and the internal padding is a thick armoured bodysuit called the Gen 2 Tech Suit. The Tech Suit is made of a non-rigid, titanium-based material making it very strong and yet very flexible. The suit has numerous functions, small but vital to the safety and survival of the wearer. It also serves as another layer of protection against ballistic attacks and is coated with a heat-resistant material to disperse heat from plasma weapons. The suit also contains the vacuum and pressure seals, radiation proofing, EMP shielding, soft and hard armour components, the polymuscle suit which is the new movement system for the Gen 2 versus the amorphous metal liquid crystal polymerized lithium niobacene from the Gen 1. Many components of the Gen 2's titanium bodysuit are conspicuously fashioned after the shape of human musculature. This was less prominent in previous Mjolnir generations. In fact, each tech suit is custom made for the Spartan that wears it. Some models have portions of the bodysuit share their colour with the external armour plating, though completely black bodysuits are still common. 
Certain fire teams or individual operatives are outfitted with customized tech suits that contain a host of undisclosed improvements or modifications to fit particular mission parameters or operator need. So the tech suit actually fulfills a large quantity of functions for the Gen 2. So let's break these down. The titanium nanocomposite bodysuit is a component of nanoscale titanium alloy. The outer surface is treated with a carbon reinforced carbon heat resistive coating as the suit is particularly good at dissipating heat from directed energy weapons. It is highly flexible but strong, adding additional protection from ballistic and energy weapons. The titanium in this layer of the suit actually acts highly efficiently as a Faraday cage, making the innermost layers of the suit completely impenetrable by electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic pulses. The bodysuit also has numerous structural hardpoints located across its surface that all link to the internal substructure tracking. These are designed to be the main connection interface between the heavy outer plating and the softer, more flexible bodysuit. The plates are bolted onto these triangular anchor points via custom-tooled tamper-proof bolts. These structural hardpoints redirect the weight of the armor plates through an internal titanium substructure, meaning the wearer doesn't feel the weight of the suit. At the innermost surface of this suit is the pressure seal. This component is a resistive composite that is entirely airtight and waterproof. It is treated with a coating of a nanoparticulate synthetic copolymer specifically designed to be super hydrophobic, vacuum proof and radiation proof to alpha and beta waves and resistant to gamma waves. This component allows a pressurized and breathable atmosphere to be maintained at all times down to a zero ambient pressure and up to extreme ambient pressure. The polymuscle exoskeleton cannot be worn by unaugmented personnel, as many of the tech suit's medical and environmental control systems require invasive access to the Spartan cybernetic implants. The tech suit is comfortable to wear for extended periods of time and constitutes the base of the Spartan service uniform, though it provides limited ability enhancement without access to the external power source of Mjolnir's fusion reactor. When paired with the compact fusion reactor and the shield generators in Mjolnir, the full capabilities of the tech suit are unlocked. It contains channels and distribution webbing for regenerative energy shielding and the exoskeleton musculature can operate at full power, further increasing the wearer's agility and raw strength. The actual movement systems are made possible by the polymuscles. As the name suggests, they are actually an artificial muscle made of a highly advanced electroactive polymer composite. The closest real-world analogue to this would be an ionic polymer metal composite. This is a synthetic composite nanomaterial that display artificial muscle behavior under an applied voltage or electric field. IPMCs are composed of an ionic polymer like Nafion or Flemion, although it's reasonable to assume that newer, more advanced polymers are likely available by the year 2553. The surface of the polymer in question are likely then chemically plated or physically coated with conductors such as titanium, platinum or gold. Under an applied voltage, ion migration and redistribution due to the imposed voltage across the strip of IPMCs result in a bending deformation, thus facilitating the function as a muscle fibre. The positive feedback loop that occurs as a consequence of a Spartan moving and the suit moving as a response is all controlled by the force multiplying circuits. When the Spartan moves their body, the impulses are picked up by the Spartan 4's implanted cybernetic interfaces and transmitted to the suit's movement systems which then output a voltage to the desired polymuscle group which then contract at the same time as the Spartan's muscles, resulting in a massive movement assist and increase in muscle power. This allows the user greatly enhanced reflexes and strength, improving mobility and combat effectiveness in close quarters. Notwithstanding the lack of any truly understood limitations, Spartans have been recorded lifting warthogs, bending steel and shattering concrete on the battlefield. The biofoam injectors and medical interface ports allow for physical injuries to be sealed and repaired without the use of external medical kits. Biofoam is an elastic protein wound filler foam. It is an expandable sterile spray with a local anaesthetic, clotting agent and antibacterial, antiviral and antifungal properties. If the wearer becomes injured, the biofoam injectors activate and fill the wound with biofoam, sealing the wound, stemming the bleeding and giving some pain relief. The biofoam doesn't heal the user as such, as these serious injuries will still require medical attention. More superficial injuries can be repaired by the Gen 2's inbuilt medical administration kits. These kits contain stem cell treatment sprays and nanomachines to aid in tissue regeneration and healing, and although it is still advisable to seek medical attention where possible, 
These features allow a Spartan to remain operationally effective for much longer than an average soldier. Tactical packages are software updates for Mjolnir Gen 2 armor that increase a Spartan's combat readiness and responsiveness. These tactical packages include AA efficiency which disables shortwave system regulators generating more power to recharge armor abilities faster. This package is favored by Spartans who are involved in asymmetric engagement roles as an ad hoc combat modifier which provided a short term advantage. Fast Track, which is maintained by installing a modular evaluation device, Fast Track allows the user to gather and analyze more experiential data from every combat encounter they have. This package impacts the user's ability to advance in rank, shortening the time between promotions, effectively it allows an increased experience gain. Firepower alternates redundant magnetic streams on the back of Gen 2 armor, overriding regulated loadout limitations and allowing a Spartan to carry two primary weapons simultaneously. This package is considered imperative for Spartans who prefer longer range or heavier firepower over close range speed and versatility. Grenadier restructures the standard magnetic hardpoints on the user's suit system, effectively increasing the total grenade capacity for all personnel. The package affects both domestic and exotic grenades, including Covenant and Forerunner ones, per compatibility regulations. Mobility allows Spartans to modify and bypass muscle control actuators, which allows Spartans high-intensity mobility without severely damaging their bodies. This allows the user to gain unprecedented sprinting stamina at their own discretion. The sprint module on the Gen 2 suits bypass safety protocols and allows the Spartan to operate their own bodies and the suit at higher than normal levels for a short time. The mobility tactical package removes the time constraint on that sprint module, enabling the Spartan to sprint indefinitely. The resistor tactical package allows the Spartan to maintain their full mobility and dexterity while taking incoming fire. Resupply allows Spartans to recover grenades from the armor of dead soldiers by means of a software patch to the suit's magnetic hardpoint configuration. Equipment recovery personnel and post-combat recon teams deployed in enemy-held locations where acquiring material from allies and foes alike is a necessity tend to use this package. Requisition installs a hardline channel system. This allows a Spartan to request alternate selections of tools or weapons during ordnance drops. This package is very useful when it comes to ordnance versatility by offering more choices on the battlefield. Shielding reinforces energy shield emitters by means of a modifying bypass of standard performance regulators, allowing a higher shield recharge rate after taking damage. Wheelman connects the user to machine controller systems via a cross-networked driver component fixed to the suit's frame. This improves the long durability of any vehicle in combat and mitigates some of the effects of EMP discharges. Where tactical packages enhance function by adding new components to the Gen 2 platform, support upgrades are customized and specialized upgrades that allow combat advantages by modifying the core and peripheral systems of Gen 2. These include Ammo overrides the capacity and safety protocols of the Gen 2 armor allowing a Spartan to exceed normal ammunition carrying parameters. The upgrade is recommended for CQB roles and encounters which require excessive ammo usage. Awareness facilitates minor adjustments in Mjolnir's HUD distribution display mechanics, allowing the integration of a motion sensor into scoped weapons, native for exotic smart links. Thus, it provides a Spartan with basic motion sensor data while sighting an enemy. This upgrade is often relied upon by Spartans who engage in sniper operations or long-range combat. Dexterity circumvents overlock and mobility systems, temporarily allowing the bypass of fine control movement governors to obtain quicker reloading times and weapon swapping. Upgrades which enhance movement have increased in popularity for operations with intense close quarters firefights which demand swift weapon versatility. Drop Recon. This upgrade is enabled by suborbital drone linked monitoring systems which are embedded in the user's Mjolnir support suit. This gives the Spartan foreknowledge of impending resupply drops and what they contain. Explosives manipulates energy placement differential systems which allow armor software to automatically transfer concussive force from explosions sustained during combat. When used with Mjolnir Gen 2 it passively disperses receiving energy allowing them to take less damage while increasing damage for targets. Gunner improves a variety of elements which favor heavy weapon specialist. This is allowed by software improvements in the suit's automated weapon communication nodes. Nemesis. 
It is a balanced mitigation module that is obviously impractical in real operations and is exclusive to wargame simulations. It does, however, increase tension for targeted participants. Ordnance Priority allows access to a Class D4803 priority channel with Infinity. Due to a software patch which allows dialing couplers and satellite linkage, this allows users to call in ordnance more often. The upgrade is often utilised by Spartans during requisition dense, support heavy combat situations where the deployment of ordnance can be intermittent and scarce. Recharge decreases the time it takes for the wearer's shields to recharge. Sensor, the upgrade violates general UNSC transmission regulations. It is utilised by stealth operatism infiltration specialists to provide heightened locational intelligence of all nearby enemies. Stability, this upgrade functions by altering the suit's default kinetic dampeners. Spartans who participate in lateral combat manoeuvres through environments which are notably dense favour this upgrade. Stealth, a largely nominal software upgrade that decreases the user movement noise and visibility on certain visor enhancement systems. Survivor, if the vehicle is about to explode, anyone using the armour mod will be kicked out of the vehicle. Obviously impractical in real operations and is exclusive to wargame simulations. Made of the same material as the armour plating, the helmet contains a full heads-up display built into the visor, capable of displaying mission critical and situational awareness data. A visual display from the motion sensor is visible with yellow blip showing friendly units, white as neutral units and red as foes. The system inside also detects the weapon being held and displays a target in reticle matched to the angle and trajectory of the barrel of the weapon. It gives a visual image of the weapon being held and its current ammunition capacity all being fed from the weapon in question or calculated by the system itself. The shield recharge bar is clearly visible and the system detects incoming fire trajectory by checking which shield emitters are taking incoming fire and displaying a red directional haze around the target reticle to give the user a visual guide to incoming fire. The visor comes with built-in zoom function, effectively magnifying the light coming through the visor and redisplaying it in a zoomed aspect ratio. It also features a smart scope system able to link wirelessly with weapons and scopes, and display the scope view as a full face display, particularly good for long range shooting accuracy. The system also detects any holstered weapons or grenades, and can display waypoints, objectives and place markers above friendly units heads and target units, and a visual compass is also visible. Many additional pieces of information can be displayed ad hoc based on the needs of the time. The Spartan can also access a systems menu where various diagnostic tools, features and rosters can be accessed. The helmet has an ultra clear microphone array and speaker array built into the helmet to allow the user to hear outside of the suit sealed systems as well as communicate both out loud and over radio communications. The helmet also contains an air filtration system. The air intake is on the rear of the helmet and the air is pulled in and filtered altogether capable of filtering 100% of particulates, toxins, pathogens and molecules from the air. The air is pumped into the helmet just left of the mouth and exhaled air is sucked out of the exhaust vent just right of the mouth passing through yet more filters before being ejected from the external exhaust vent. In the event that the suit enters a vacuum or onto water, the external vents can be sealed and a rebreather unit activates. The helmet also houses a torch and mission camera as well as a connection hardpoint for various additional systems to be directly connected to the helmet. The Visor 4.0 all the way up to version 4.09 is a visor instalment and are optimized and customizable to facilitate specialized tasks. Visor 4.0 is capable of managing a Spartan's disparate sensor fields, battle net links, and suit diagnostic messages. Integration with artificial intelligences ranging from volitional smart AIs to simpler yet complex dumb AIs is now commonplace for Gen 2 suits, although it should be noted that the Spartan 4 augmentations do list the existence of a Spartan neural interface capable of interfacing with the suit and an interface port for an AI, the vast majority of the Spartan 4s we've actually seen do not appear to have the advanced Spartan neural interface port on the base of their skull, as has been implied. The AIs that manage the Mione BIOS and Visor are generally passive helpers that integrate, prioritize and even subtly alter the torrent of data and sensory overrides fed to the armor's Spartan user, simplifying the chaos of the battlefield and reducing confusion. These AIs also handle mundane administrative tasks by filing munition expenditure forms, battle damage assessments, kill reports and other paperwork on behalf of the Spartan. 
The typical suit of Mjolnir armor carries around a dozen or so of these AIs, each specialized in numerous tasks of war and science to aid the Spartan they are attached to. While these AIs are incapable of a human's oversight, they are still a valuable component of the armor. The Gen 2 BIOS is the firmware that succeeds the Mark VI BIOS for the previous Mjolnir generation. The Gen 2 BIOS is firmware designed to be the first code run by Mjolnir Armor when activated. The initial function of the BIOS is to identify, test and initialize system devices such as the heads-up display, energy shield systems and other hardware. The BIOS handles most of Mjolnir's software functions when initiated. Updates to the BIOS allows newer hardware to be supported and function. Unlike in previous Mjolnir variants, the BIOS version can be viewed on the standard HUD. The suit also possesses other upgrade features that enhance its wearer's abilities. It has an upgraded heads-up display linked to sensors that project shield strength and improved motion detecting systems, in addition to providing other numerous readouts, including allies, vitality and shield status. These features are maintained and initialized by the Mjolnir Gen 2 BIOS firmware. Numerous versions exist for several different reasons and to simply being an upgrade. The armour plating of the Gen 2 platform is significantly more modular, the small triangular hardpoints are still visible and are the primary anchor points to connect the armour plating to the wearer. The materials that the plates are made of cannot be isolated down to a single alloy or composite as, due to the manufacturing techniques and opening up to external contractors, means that different contractors produce different armour components out of different materials with different properties, strengths and weaknesses. As such, this information is easiest to find out by doing a separate analysis of the plethora of variations the Gen 2 platform sports. Widely known as a frame, each Mjolnir class consists of a set of components that are attached to the tech suit's arming points. Most of these are modular armour pieces, though some do incorporate additional electronics and mechanical systems which augment the user in various ways. The standard set of components and electrical subsystems is referred to as the frame, of which we will look at the various frames available for Mjolnir Gen 2 shortly. Unlike previous armor systems, Mjolnir Gen 2 has a built-in sprint module that allows the user to run at faster speeds by overriding safety protocols. It's functionally similar to the version developed by CAT B3020 of Noble Team which saw widespread deployment across Reach in the planet's final days. The motion tracker shows movement of friendly and enemy units within the system's radius by utilizing a quantum mirror for ultra-fine tracking resolution and intelligent algorithmic analysis subroutines which detect the profile of return signatures and intelligently assign each result as either an aspect of the environment and thus something to be ignored or an active target and thus something to be displayed. The fusion reactor is the most essential part of the Mjolnir system as it provides the power to all the equipment on the armor. The reactor is built into the suit and allows for nearly unlimited movement. Gen 2's fusion reactor is installed in the back of the torso carapace. It differs minimally to the reactor used in the Gen 1 suits as the initial miniaturization of the fusion reactor created a small enough packet size with enough power and efficiency for 15 years of continuous usage. So as such, hasn't needed to undergo any major upgrades or innovations. As with the earlier suits, atoms of deuterium, isotopes of hydrogen, are fused together under extremely high pressures via very powerful electromagnetic fields. The result is a helium-3 nucleus and the release of huge amounts of energy in the form of highly charged particles. These are converted into usable electricity via a process called electrostatic direct energy conversion, giving Mjolnir all the energy it could need. Although it is capable of being tapped and used to power other devices, the reactor is not designed for a sustained output. Integrated directly into the fusion reactor is the power supply control unit responsible for distribution of power to the suit's functions based on when and where they are needed. These two work together to keep the energy levels well regulated and distributed accordingly, all adding to the phenomenal efficiency of Mjolnir's fusion reactor. Gen 2 suits are equipped with an array of shoulder and back mounted thrusters increasing a Spartan's mobility in the field and presumably in the vacuum environments. The M805X forward acceleration system slash fulcrum mitigating also known as the thruster pack is a movement acceleration system manufactured by Lethbridge Industrial. It mitigates the user's need for a fulcrum or pivoting articulation. This ability allows the user to move quickly and aggressively in combat whether closing the gap between the user and an enemy or finding cover. 
the system, which was added as part of a series-wide update, partly alleviates the need to use an external thruster unit or jetpack. However, it provides only limited thrust and as such does not fully replace external thrust apparatus. It is still powerful enough to allow the user to hover for a few seconds in mid-air when activated in a stabilizing arrangement. Integrated thrusters saw use in combat as early as 2553. Any damage that the armor plating suffers can be repaired by built-in triply redundant subsystems. These systems are receptive to nanomachines facilitating the repair. Additionally, bypass channels allow certain components to function if routing is compromised by extensive damage. Both of these systems can fail, however, resulting in scarred armor plating. The Mjolnir armor features very small yet very powerful magnets placed on the legs, waist and the back of the suits that are used to hold any equipment or any weapons with a magnetic property. The suit also contains a magnet system within its boots that allows its wearer to stay attached to metal surface in zero gravity environments and can be toggled on or off by the wearer. The energy shield system has seen innovations and performance enhancements implemented continuously since its first use on the Mark V Gen 1 platform. The shielding works by oscillating an electromagnetic field from the shield projectors located at key points on the armor's surface. This EM field envelops a high energy plasma also emitted by the shield projectors and is then held in the EM field. This enables the shielding to completely repulse ballistic projectiles, although sustained fire and the combined kinetic force distorts the electromagnetic field leading to field collapse, during which time the Spartan must gain cover and wait for recharge. Plasma projectiles, primarily used by Covenant infantry, is absorbed by the shield, although again sustained fire leads to an overcharge that breaks down the electromagnetic field and again renders the Spartan vulnerable to a continued attack. If the incoming projectile's total energy exceeds the energy rating of the energy shield, the field almost instantly collapses, allowing any excess energy to be transferred to the armor itself, and ultimately, whether that excess is survivable is highly dependent on the armor plating's ability to withstand the barrage. Any energy transfer to the shield caused by incoming fire, heat, radiation or kinetic force will cause the normally invisible energy shielding to flare, glowing an ever more intense golden shimmer as the shields take more punishment. The Gen 2 shielding is much more advanced, recharges quicker and is more energy efficient, and can be manipulated at much higher levels to achieve highly specialized parameters based on the exact variant of the armor plating being used on the Gen 2 platform. The variants are numerous and provide very specific benefits to the Spartan using them. These variants are the Achilles, a variant that features an aggressive AI, Air Assault, a variant utilized primarily by only security personnel on Earth's and Luna's space elevator and skyhooks, Anubis, a variant with enhanced sensor suite, Argonaut, a variety with move by wire reflex enhancers, Argus, a variant with an increase in situational and threat awareness. Athlon, a variant used in combat training exercises. Atlas, a variant that features modular armor and weapons. Aviator, a variant designed for aircraft piloting, required for use by Spartan F-41 broadsword pilots. Barvo, a variant used in high altitude insertion ops and elite threat detection. Breaker, a variant with tactical supremacy and increased endurance. Buccaneer, a variant that uses off-the-shelf components. Centurion, a variant for operational planning and situational awareness upgraded from the Gen 1. Challenger, a variant for high performance in war games. Cinder, a variant used for securing biologically and chemically contaminated areas. CIO, a variant of counterintelligence operators. Commando, a variant of special operations upgraded from the Gen 1. Copperhead, a variant of covert ops. CQB, a variant for close quarters combat upgraded from Gen 1. Cyclops, a variant with a more powerful fusion pack. Cypher, a variant that features a pilot program. Decimator, a variant that incorporates technological advances from previous iterations of Gen 1, specifically breakthroughs from the Mark 7. Deadeye, a variant designed for snipers. Defender, a variant designed for general area denial and tactical defensive abilities. Dynast, a variant designed for close range combats. EOD, a variant designed to facilitate explosive ordnance disposal, upgraded from Gen 1. Enforcer, a variant designed for remote security base detail. Engineer, a variant designed for repairing and reconfiguring technology in combat. EVA, a variant designed for extravehicular activity, upgraded from Gen 1. Fenrir, a variant with an embedded battle management AI. 
Faux Hammer, a variant designed for better pilot synchronization. Photus, a variant based on Forerunner stealth technology. Freebooter, a variant with seamless nanofabricated armor panels. Goblin, a variant with sensor warping technologies. Gungnir, a variant based on the alternate system platform from Mjolnir, upgrade of Gen 1 model developed by Project Gungnir. Hazop, a variant for environments considered too hazardous for standard equipment, upgraded from Gen 1. Heliosgrill, a variant designed by a Sanghili prodigy. Hellcat, a variant based on ancient human armor. Helljumper, a variant that is a significant redesign and improvement of ODST armor. Hermes, a variant used for orbital raids. Hunter, a variant used for advanced tracking and targeting acquisitions. Icarus, a variant for spa and aerospace pilots. Indomitable, a variant for engineering and explosive ordnance disposal based on the customized armor set worn by George 052. Infiltrator, a variant designed for stealthy infiltration of enemy territory. Interceptor, a variant that features highly configurable settings and programmable neural interface. Intruder, a variant based on Cat B320's Mark V air assault armor, developed as part of a research initiative into specialized armor suits. Jumpmaster, a variant designed for freefall combat drops. Legionnaire, a variant produced by RKD to be licensed to smaller companies. Locus, a variant designed for tactical and strategic infiltration, known for its incredible resiliency. Mako, for multi-environment adaption. Marauder, for general purpose use. Mermillion, for optimized combat flexibility. The Mark IV, upgraded to function with the Mjolnir Gen 2 suite. The Mark V, upgraded to function with Mjolnir Gen 2 suite. The Mark V Alpha, a variant based on the Gen 1 Mark V, designed specifically for the Gen 2 suite. The Mark V Delta. The Mark VI upgraded to function with Mjolnir Gen 2 suite. The Mark VI Gen 2, a variant based on the Gen 1 Mark VI, designed specifically for the Gen 2 suite. MP, a variant for military police, upgraded from Gen 1. Nightfall, a variant used on inhospitable worlds featuring best in class life support systems. Noble, a variant based upon the Mark V commando armor with improved battle network management features. Nomad, a variant designed for remote expeditions in uncharted space. Oceanic, a variant designed for combat in waterfront areas. ODST, a variant of the ODST armor upgraded to function with Mjolnir Gen 2 suite. Olive, a variant that helps hide hair. What? Orbital, a variant designed for EVA combat. Operator, a variant designed to optimize vehicle operation, upgraded from Gen 1. Pathfinder, a variant designed for missions in Intel poor environments. Pilot, a variant designed for Spartan pilots upgraded from Gen 1. Pioneer, a variant designed for missions in unfamiliar hostile environments. Prefect, a variant based on Forerunner personal armor. Protector, a variant designed for VIP security. Raider, a variant designed with samurai-like aesthetics for intimidation of hostiles. Raging, a variant that maximizes short-term combat performance. Ranger, a variant designed for remote operatives engaging in hostile environmental conditions. Reaper, a variant based on Forerunner combat skins. Recluse, a variant for classified operations. Recon, a variant designed for stealth reconnaissance operations upgraded from Gen 1. Recruit, issued to all Spartan 4 recruits prior to qualification for specialized models. Ricochet, a variant designed for use in ricochet combat training exercises. Rogue, a variant designed for extended solo operations, upgraded from Gen 1. Scanner, a variant designed to aid search and rescue teams. Scout, a variant designed for scouting operations, upgraded from Gen 1. Security, a variant designed for shipboard and station defense, upgraded from Gen 1. Seeker, a variant equipped with full suite of signature masking mechanisms for reconnaissance. Shinobi, a variant with no known manufacturer. Soldier, a variant with extra storage space designed for battlefield support. Stalker, a variant designed to aid in covert shadowing of a target derived from Jurulhane Stalker stealth harnesses. Stinger, a variant designed for flight and ground combat. Strider, a variant for jaunt combat excursions in isolated theatres. Technician, a variant for combat engineers. Tatian, a variant designed for augmented soldiers serving in paramilitary and clandestine agencies. Timmy, an enigmatic war games only variant. Tracer, a variant used for intelligence gathering featuring a tier 3 data core. 
Tracker, a variant designed to aid in long-range pursuit of targets. Valkyrie, a variant designed for aerospace flight control. Vanguard, a variant designed for face-to-face -face enemy assaults. Vector, a variant designed as a pilot-slash-infantry hybrid for reconnaissance teams. Venator, a variant optimised for single enemy combat upgraded from Gen 1. Venture, a variant designed for survey missions in extreme environments. Vigilant, a variant based on June A266 customised Mark V suit designed for scouting and sniping operations. Void Dancer, a variant designed for exoatmospheric operations and threat assessment. Warrior, a variant designed for speed and mobility, Mjolnir's mainline armour kit. Warmaster, a variant designed with multifunctional configuration for almost any combat scenario, Lethbridge Industrial's most popular and most exotic armour. Wetwork, a variant designed for assassination operations. Wrath, a variant based on Emil A239's custom Mark V armour designed for use by headhunters. In addition to these designated and classified variants, there is also additional forearm and leg components including Contoured, this variant is manufactured by Lethbridge Industrial. The forearms were favoured during the hostilities of the Thales expedition. The legs were based on native Sanghili equipment. GV09 Locking, these forearms are manufactured by Archeon Security on the planet Mars. These improve comfort through modularity. Inner Plated, this variant is manufactured by the Materials Group. These forearms gained popularity during the revolt on Tercier. LG50 Bulk, this variant is manufactured by Imbrium Machine Complex. The legs were designed with intentional redundancy to decrease risk of breach. Outer Plated, the forearms of this variant are manufactured by Lethbridge Industrial. The forearms were originally conceived for engaging operators on Cascade. The legs of this variant are manufactured by the Materials Group and the whole system saw little activity until the Concorde incident of 2554. Overlocking, this variant is manufactured by the Imbrium Machine Complex. The legs have seen recent exposure within Outworld security personnel. RG-63 Counter, this variant is manufactured by Imbrium Machine Complex. These forearms were developed based on intel from the Harvest campaign. Twin Plated, this variant is manufactured by Naftali Contractor Corporation. These forearms first saw use in 2556, but were prototyped during Mjolnir's Gen 1 era. XG-89 Narrow, this variant is manufactured by the Materials Group. The narrow slat legs excel at shield distribution while reducing ceramic profile. XV-27 Shifting, this variant is manufactured by Naftali Contractor Corporation and these forearms were tested in the Buffalo Breaker Yards. Mjolnir Gen 2 was the second major iteration of the Mjolnir system. The lighter build and simplification and mass production orientated development cycle opened up the ability for other external contractors to bring new ideas to the table to help widen the applications and capabilities of the Gen 2 platform. The fact that in the few years that the Gen 2 has been fielded, it has seen over 100 different variations of the platform shows the benefits of its simplified frame and design points from an ideas, innovation, conception and implementation standpoint. The suit bridges the gap between the capabilities of a Gen 1 platform and the more powerful Spartan 2s and the lesser augmented Spartan 4s due to its lower power to weight ratio and innovations in movement technologies. Although the Gen 2 armour meant a radical simplification to the Mjolnir platform to the point that it could be mass produced, by October 2558 some operatives in the Spartan operation branch were dissatisfied with its minimal performance improvement over the older Gen 1 systems. With that reason in mind, the UNSC decided to develop and manufacture Gen 2's successor, the Mjolnir Powered Assault Armour Gen 3, which I will inevitably take an in-depth look at when we know more. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below, I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons, Neek the Silent Cartographer, Brian, Sebastian, Red Sea, Darian, Stalker of the Realms, and Falcon X003, the holders of the mantle, Black Biscuit, J Rabbit, Austin, Kaiser, Silux, Reclaimer 216, The Revanche, Wolf Slim, Andre, and Samantha, my reclaimers, Zach, Deep Cover, Verbal Statue, Spesico, Spartan A498, Guppy, Josh, Bastion, Molchar, Night Rise, Sierra G059, Kenneth, and Dylan, my Metarchs, and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys are awesome. 
and all of this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo lore discussed to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels including Discord, and if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and would free up more of my time for me to put into this content and other Halo related goodness. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.